All right. Hello, hello. Hi to all of you. And welcome to the first episode of Live Google Pay Integrations on Android, where we complete Google Pay Integrations unsurprisingly, sometimes on our own and other times with uh, guests. My name is Jose, and I'm a developer relations engineer with Google Pay, and I'll be your host today, together with Domi. Hey, Domi. Hey, Jose. Um, how are you? I'm good, excited for this new series, Integrating Google Pay on Android. And so the idea is to explore the multiple paths available to facilitate payments with the Google Pay API on Android applications. We have actually designed these sessions to naturally encounter issues, just like a typical integration would. And we love your help when we do. And that's why uh, we have you all connected live through the chat. So thank you for being here with us. So today, we are going to start with a basic Google Pay integration. It's basic, but it's also modern, I'd say. Uh, the Google Pay API has, has evolved uh, substantially since its launch. And uh, we'd like to take the opportunity to show you uh, modern tools, libraries, and processes to integrate Google Pay. So we think that's a great way to start. So you can get all these new patterns. One of the things actually that we announced during Google I.O. last week is the new Google Pay button view for Android, which, by the way, we hope that you enjoyed uh, Google I.O., that you had the opportunity to join, to tune in. Uh, Domi, do you watch the keynote, by the way? I did. I did. It was awesome. I'm really excited for um, a couple of those new features, and I'm really looking forward um, for us to present them to you. Yeah, and I heard that there's a couple of devices coming your way already, right? Yeah, so I, I decided to order the, the Pixel Fold. Not not yet 100% sure uh, how I will like it, but I'm going to try it out, and, and I'm really excited. All right, um, I'll make sure to pass by when you receive it. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that we announced from Google Pay, is, as, as I was saying, is the new bat uh, button view. Uh, for Android, and the new button view lets you add the Google Pay button directly to your layout, containing all the logic to manage the assets and translations, so that you don't have to do that, just like you did before. It's just like any other Android view, really, like a text view or like an edit text or like a frame layout. You can simply add it to your XML layout, or you could also configure it programmatically uh, from your um, activities or um, well, any anywhere where you're doing that logic, whether that's Kotlin or Java. We've also released a Jetpack Compose UA element for the button that we are planning to use in future episodes. But we'll get to that right in a second. And also, let me take the opportunity to invite everyone in the audience to share your questions in the comments section. I'm already seeing that there's a a good number of you, so we love to have you here. Thank you for joining. And again, we'll be doing integration from scratch, so bear with us. And uh, if we get if we get stuck, please do help us. We just have the two of us plus all your help. So why don't we go ahead and give this a go, Tommy? How do you feel about it? Sounds good. Let's go. All right, then uh, that should be your screen on camera now. Let us know what you would like to tell us. Cool. So yeah, hello, everybody. Thanks very much, Jose, for the intro. Um, I'm Domi. I'm also a DevRel for Google Pay. And today, I'm here to show you the new dynamic button on Android. Um, as Jose mentioned, uh, it's still in beta. Um, still, we are for this session, we are trying to do a live, live migration or live integration of this new uh, dynamic button SDK. We are actually going to start from our Android Quick Start application. Um, lucky enough, uh, Jose already prepared two branches, one called Base Pay and one called Base Pay Incomplete. We are going to start from, from the Base Pay Incomplete branch. And uh, hopefully, at the end of this live stream, we should. Um, we should be able to see something similar to what's already in the base pay. So if you 
want to go ahead and already see um, the final solution, please check out the base pay branch. Otherwise, um, we will start with the base incomplete branch. Right, Jose? Sounds good with me. That will give us a empty integration, just like if you're if you're if you want to do it on your own applications. In fact, like that's something that we can. I think it would be good to say, you can if you feel like it, you can follow along with your own integration. There's multiple ways that you can get started, but uh, I'll mention three of them. Like if you already have your own applications, you can go ahead and open that in Android Studio, which is what we will, or, or your favorite IDE. I think this day is just so hard to imagine anyone doing Android outside of Android Studio. Uh, but if you do that, that's also okay. There is a, the second way is if you, if you don't have an application, an Android application already, you can use the uh, open source sample application that Domi just showed in GitHub. And you can use the best base bay incomplete branch so that you will see what we see and the third option and that's something maybe that uh, we can show uh, in the ide there's um, a section in your android studio interface called um, templates and which allows you to add pre-existing code to your existing applications and we have we built one for google pay such that if you have an application or a module you can go to file and I think it's new. And then you have to select a module first, I believe. That happened to me. So if you select the app module, then you go. It's kind of a little trick. And then you go there Google. We go. Then you see that there's one called Google Pay Activity. And that will add the necessary code for you to, for you to integrate Google Pay, such that the only thing that you will have to do is configure the integration and then test it out. But we are not going to use that because I will be cheating. We're going to start from scratch. We're going to follow the tutorials. Again, feel free to follow along and drop us a hand if we get stuck. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jose. So as you can see here within Android Studio, I'm on the base paying complete branch. No changes. And luckily, Jose was kind enough to give us some hints. So you can see from the checkout activity, for example, that there are a couple of step, steps we have to complete in order for the new Google Pay button to show up. Um, however, I guess the first thing we are wanna we wanna do is to actually include the dependency to um, to the build.cradle file. So let's see um, let's see this link. This is actually, as you can see, step number one. Let's see if we find this new dependency. By the way, this, actually, yes, go on, go on. Sorry to interrupt. This is, by the way, really similar to what you will find in the tutorial uh, for Android. So if you go to the um, Google Pay documentation, uh, yeah, you will see that there's a couple of tutorials will be following very similar steps. So you can, you can use that as well for your integration. Exactly. Good point. Actually, uh, I, I see it right now. I, let me take the dependency from here. I think that's that's a good idea. So I don't need this tab. Switch back that implementation here. Huh, so it's a beta one. This is a beta or beta, by the way. Good question. I, I say beta. Beta. Probably this is just like the SQL versus SQL SQL a conflict that goes all over the internet. <laughs> yeah, kind of. So yeah, it's it's a beta one. Um, even though. The functionality is, is complete. Um, we are still working behind the scenes on rolling out some more features. Um, for example, if you if you check the implementation guide on developers.google.com, you can see that the dynamic button offers you some configuration options. You will I will show them to you later on, but you can see you can configure the type, the theme, the corners. Um, on your button and later on like later in this quarter or early in q3 we will actually um, add other metadata to the button automatically for you so um, you can see on the on the bottom right uh, that we will also add the card network icon and the last four digits of the last use card so this this should actually um, make sure that your users within your checkup process um, are more confident to actually um, pay with with GPay because they see their last four digits of of the last used cards. 
Okay, um, let me switch back to the to my IDE. Um, actually, let's see if it synced already. It looks like okay. Um, good. Next step, what we can do, uh, Jose, help me if I'm if I'm wrong. We could actually maybe already define uh, the the button in the XML layout. And as Jose mentioned, we will also um, we will also support Chatback Compose because we just released a new. Uh, open source component where where you can use Jetpack Compose to include your pay button. Let me show that to you also quickly. So we do have a new we do have a new Compose pay button component uh, under the uh, Google Pay organization, where you can see that um, this component actually wraps the Google Pay button, and with this component um, you can you can use your existing chat pay, chat pay compose layouts to add a Google Pay button. So if, you, if you're interested and you want to check this out, feel free to, to browse through the Google Pay slash compose pay button repository on GitHub. Looks good. Yeah. All right. I, uh, yes. I really like the on? new button, by the way. Uh, the new button and, and the new customization options. Especially for those of you having specific checkout styles, now you can um, you can enjoy new customization properties on the button. So if you, for example, had uh, uh, different rounded edges on the button on different checkout buttons other than the Google Pay one, you can now configure the Google Pay one to be consistent. So that's uh, that's something that I'm personally excited about. Uh, because the, you know, those inconsistencies in the checkout flow then definitely like uh, take a dent in your overall branding, and then for some users that might be, you know, it might be like kind of uh, misleading or confusing to see that uh, those different styles. So you have freedom now; you can configure that, and as, as Domi will show, you can do that directly on your XML layout. Cool. So yeah, I went ahead already in the meantime and added the, this new pay button to my XML configuration, to my XML layout. And um, you can see that, or if we configure it with the width uh, match parent and the height wrap, wrap content, there are other properties, um, but we first have to actually add the namespace to also configure the other properties. Or Jose, do you want me to go ahead with the defaults first? You can try that. A uh, quick, quick one on uh, to magnify games. If you are experiencing crashes, what I recommend, I'm sorry, so this is a little bit of topic, but uh, take a look at um, uh, Firebase. Um, how is it called now? It used to be Crashlytics. Now it's Firebase. The Firebase team is is gonna uh, is, is going to not to not to not going to be very happy about that with me. But basically, there's a product in Firebase that lets you keep track of your crashes. And then, especially on production on, on, or on other testing channels that you have, you can explore that and you have a lot of details. So I'd recommend that as a next step. Um, I apologize, Tony. <laughs> sure thing. No problem. I think it's Firebase Analytics, but um, yeah, I'm also not sure. Could be that. OK, so we completed the second step. We added the pay button to our XML layout. Go 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 ahead and check out the Jetpack Compose version if you like. And as a next step, we are actually going to reference the button and add some logic to it. So let me actually copy this one. Um, uh, by the way, Mitesh, this is something that I asked Tommy as well about when I saw this interface, Domi is using the new Canary release of Android Studio, which is named after, what was it? G, Giraffe. Correct. Giraffe. <laughs> yeah. So Giraffe is the new Canary. You can download that version on the Android Studio page. And then that's the UI. It has the new IntelliJ UI, if I'm not mistaken, right? Correct, yeah. In my opinion, um, they, yeah, IntelliJ made a huge step. With this new eye, it's, it looks gorgeous. Agree. OK, um, created a member of type pay button. And now um, I can actually go ahead and fetch it from the layout. Um, 
So what's pay button? Pay button is the class for the UI element that you added to the XML layout? Yes, correct. I see. So if we go back here, you, you can see it right from here. It's mm -hmm. called the new dynamic button on Android um, is called pay button. That's the type. And after creating a member, I will get it from the layout and finally go ahead and initialize the button, right? Yes. So now here, uh, one thing to mention is actually it takes, it takes a, a button options object. Button object should be, yes, it's a builder. And one thing to mention here is that the set allowed payment methods um, property is, is mandatory. Um, the reason why we decided for the allowed payment methods property to be mandatory is to make sure that you as a developer set the payment methods you want. So for example, if you use this new API and um, you, are, you are not specifying the payment methods um, you actually need later on, it could be that the button once we once we release the the metadata, so for example, showing here uh, a network icon, you are actually uh, not supporting. So make sure to really always pass the allowed payment method. So if you support Mastercard and Visa, pass Mastercard and Visa. Um, otherwise, this this but this button um, will display also other payment methods like Omex, for example. And the In reason to that. that Go this on. helps you filter the list of cards shown in the selector to your users. So if you only support, let's say, visas for whatever reason, then that's that's the uh, type of card or the network that will be shown in the uh, selector. Correct. And we, we actually decided to make it mandatory because we want that you here in this new API for, for the Google Pay button, we want you to use the same payment methods as the one you you, uh, you pass later on to the load payment data call. So in order for those two methods to be consistent, um, we decided to make allowed payment methods for this new API mandatory. Okay, let's let's actually try to get those payment methods. And I think we do have a payments util, uh, payments util somewhere where, where we have the allowed payment methods already as a, as a member. Yeah, this one looks good. So we can actually use the payments util here um, to fetch it to fetch the payment methods. Okay. And that should be it. So as I showed you before, um, you can also programmatically configure other options like the button theme, the button type and the corner radius, but you can also rely on the defaults, but we can play around with those options later on. For now, we will go with the defaults to see how the button will look like um, and with its defaults values. Um, okay. Now let me actually get this one and put it here and remove it. So that should do the trick for initializing the button. Any inputs, Jose? I think that looks good to me. I'm just like seeing this and just like watching you do all this. Like I'm realizing how much simpler it is to add the button compared to the existing integration where you have to get the assets from, uh, download the assets in zip file, then uh, paste them in your app, create a layout file with all the assets, turn that into a button, and then add the layout to your XML layout. So this is this feels much smoother. So hopefully that's that's something that uh, helps you all integrate and add the button uh, much more easily. Yeah, that that's actually a very good point. So by using this new API, you don't need to take care about um, showing your button in different languages. We will take care for you automatically. Okay, um, next step, step number five is to add a click listener to the button. 
Um, and finally, uh, request a payment. Request payment is the same is the same request payment method as we as the standard Android Quick Start um, application already had before. So nothing changed here, except that I have to cheat a bit and uncomment the the Google Pay button again, because otherwise before you wouldn't not have compiled. But the request payment method was there already in the in the initial version of, of the Android Quick Start repository. Cool. Um, and then number step number six is to check whether GPay is available. We're going to do that over the model, which should be here already. Yeah. So if you are familiar with our Android Quick Start application, you should know how how this works. Um, there is a view model pattern, but basically, if you go to the model. Uh, yourselves, then you can see the code that is actually calling the Google Pay API and checking whether Google Pay is available or not with the is ready to pay call. And depending on which approach you take to the architecture of your application or, or how you decide to code your apps, you can either follow this approach, which is, I believe, under the recommendation guide on Android, but you can also call the API from a different place as well, whether that's from the activity or if you are uh, putting that in a repository or on a controller, that's really up to you. But just note that you can go to the uh, view model on this sample application to see how that call is being made. Yeah. So that's what you're doing now, right? You're creating yeah. that method. Passing, creating that method and passing it in here. And let me see what we can do here. So if uh, the button is available. Well, if Google Pay is available, then what do we do? This is what we're doing here. Yeah, if Google Pay is available, excuse me, then we actually change the visibility of it. Oh, because otherwise, it is it hidden by default. Um, let me see. Yes, I think it's hidden by default because of the is ready to pay method. No, actually, no. I'm not sure. It's a good question. I don't think so. I think, I think it's, it's not. But that's something that um, we also recommend in our docs. If Google Pay is not available for a given user, then our recommendation is for you to remove the Google Pay button, either removing it completely or hiding it so that it cannot be clicked uh, because it will lead to a, a poor developer experience if your user, sorry, user experience, if your users click the button and then there's an error coming. So. Our recommendation is hide the button if Google Pay is not available for a given user device country combination. Yeah. Good point. Uh, I think in this case, in this case. Um... So, so maybe quickly to answer uh, Kaloyan Karaivanov on why we are not using uh, Compose. Uh, we yes. want it. So our, our sample application is we wanted to keep it simple, and we already had a couple of moments of okay, should we uh, add a library to follow this pattern or keep it super simple? So we are trying to keep that balance, and for now, we keep we we keep it at at uh, as lean as possible. So we only have Android X, and we're using the view model pattern without uh, Jetpack Compose or, or any other Jetpack library actually. And using XML. Yeah. We will, though, in future episodes, we will be uh, permutating and switching to different approaches just to make sure that uh, we are covering for your use case. So we will use, um, for example, the Jetpack Compose view elements in future episodes. And again, we will diversify as well. But just for this one being the first one, I wanted to keep it super simple and uh, 
also why not say that increase our chances of success right Domi? yeah exactly <laughs> um and also once again really if you want to check out the chapter chapter compose version of the button please go ahead to this repository and then there's also a sample application here um see here for example there's a small application you can check out where we are actually using the the this this library and you can see that this sample application um draws a couple of buttons so if you start the application, you will see five five uh, different versions of, of the button. So go ahead and check this out if you're only interested in the Chapa Compose version of the button. Cool. Um, I think that's it. I think we can maybe run the app. What do you think, Jose? Let's do it and then see what, what are the issues, uh, unless you are a perfect coder and there are no issues. No, I'm not. We'll find out in a second. Um, yeah, let me double check everything. Yeah, OK, it looks good. All right. Let's see. All right, moment of truth uh, to me. Let's see what happens. We have, this is a, by the way, a sample application. It's a single screen demo shop. It's a clothing shop. And then what we're doing is adding the Google Pay button so that your customers, your demo sample customers, can transact and buy with uh, Google Pay. So as you can see now on, on screen. I think if you if you minimize the lock hat, the simulator can be seen a bit a bit in a larger size. I'm seeing we have some um, uh, some supporters of each side of XML and Jetpack Compose, which I think is great, by the way. I also I actually awesome. like both. I think I, I have a slight inclination for Compose because I like the programmatic uh, way of setting up your views. But I guess I'm I'm emotionally attached to XML for all those really good years of uh, layout building. Okay, so the app started, and we do have a button now. Let's see if it works. So that's already first win. The button is showing. Yeah. Great. And that's and now let me turn out. on yes. Now let me turn on lock cat again because we should actually lock um if we rec receive a result. Let me quickly double check this. Yeah, so we, we do lock uh if we receive a token or not. So let me go ahead and complete it. So you hit continue, and it and says we success. Have a success screen, and we also have a token. Um, so this, by the way, a... by the way, okay. just qu very quickly, this is just the token. If you configure um, as a gateway, if you have example as a gateway, if you have another gateway or another PSP configured, you won't see this uh, example payment me method token string. You would obviously obviously see the token of your gateway Jose so what was this Tommy was it like the first clean first run success integration in history or am I like missing something um I don't know probably <laughs> probably not I don't know Let's are you go. are Let's you go. surprised I am surprised not because I doubt uh, your skills but because I think I've never I've never witnessed anything like this in the past in, in a live stream, especially because I have to, I'll confess that the preparation was uh, brittle for this live stream because we wanted to run into issues. But hey, when you want to run into issues, there's no issues coming. I'll take the opportunity to say that um, this is really how a basic integration looks like. Uh, yeah. We are monitoring the chat so uh, do let us know if there's anything that you want to try out that you want us to do with the with the application or with the integration, maybe a use case that you have, and then we'll do our best to to try to replicate that. But we have the basic button already. So uh, what can yeah. we do from here? What about we try so, other types? Yeah. So now let's let's actually go ahead and and change the for now. Let's change the configuration from within the XML layout. Um, 
I need the uh, I need the res auto namespace for this because the pay button offers a couple of properties. So I'm going to add this one here um, and call it app for now. You, I'm very sure you have better names for it. And I'm going to add a couple of custom properties here. Um, so that would be app. Well, actually, you know what? Let me rename it to pay button for now. And let's see. Um... So Farshad, we are using XML because we wanted to keep this integration as vanilla as possible and simple as possible. But we, we called it out uh, before um, that uh, we also have a library, a very little library, very small library for uh, Jetpack Compose. So you can, if you use Jetpack Compose, you can um, use that library to add the button programmatically as well. And we will use that library in future editions, future episodes of this series as well. Uh, so I hope that answers. Thank you for the question. Thanks, Jose. So yeah, in the meantime, I added um, I added the corner radius property to it. So if we go back here, where we initialized the button with the button options builder, you can see that I only specified the allowed payment methods. All the other properties go to the default values. But now, since I defined zero, zero DP for the corner radius, you can see that the, the, the corner radius is gone. And nice. I actually next... prefer more rounded, but if you do have that UI style, then actually that looks good. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you if you compare it to the picture of the T-shirt, it kind of fits, right? True. But maybe, what about um, have a white button? Maybe this looks. I think. I think light, we probably. Right? Yeah, or light, clear, ah, button theme, yeah. I think it should be light. We have a question from Nice. I like how this looks, in fact. I think this uh, suits better the, the style of the application in that somewhat night mode. We have a question from Harjinder Singh. Tommy, can you see yeah. it? Maybe you want to take a stab at it? Let me see. Oh, I can read it. Uh, how are you getting the token as a result of calling the Google Pay button? Do you have the GPay app installed in the simulator? Um, it, it depends now what you mean with the GPay app. Do you mean with that the Google Wallet app? I think they do mean that. Uh, but um, all you need really is to have Google Play services, if I'm not mistaken. Correct, uh, the yeah. Google Wallet app will be useful if you want to pay uh, in-store with your cards, with your tokenized cards, or use them, in fact, for Google Pay. But I, I do believe that to use your cards, you only need a device with a Google Play services. And yes, this uh, simulator has Google Play services, and it's locked in with a, with a test account, in fact. Correct, and I want to add to this, and you briefly touched it, Jose. So if you want to test your integration also with tokenized cards, you need um, you need the Google Wallet app and add a tokenized card to it. That yeah, just an F as an FYI. True. Uh, but that's a great question. And thank you for the question, Harjinder. All right. Cool. So we do have a we do have a white button. We do have a zero DP. Actually, do you want me to change it? Twenty four. Um, what else? So one more thing we can do is actually change the type, right? For yeah. now, for now, the type configuration. If I say type, I mean changing the button from buy with GPay to, for example, checkout with GPay. So the type is not available yet in XML configuration, but you can already do it from the builder. So let me do that for you. Um, 
So set type, set button type, button options, no, no button options, button type checkout maybe. And let me rerun the app. And there we go. We have a checkout button and around the corners. The corner radius is now bigger. Not zero dp anymore, but 24. So how many types do we have? We do have, for the moment, we do have checkout, book, buy, pay, donate, order, play, and subscribe. I see. That's cool. So you can use the type that um, suits better your, your checkout flow, right? Depending on the type of payment that you're collecting. Uh, you can choose between any of those as, as Tommy showed. Yeah. However, um, one thing to note here. So the default is, is buy. And if you have the but if you re if you don't, if you rely on the default or you set the button type to buy, you will, you will get the dynamic dat data and the card network icons in the future. Like, like you can see here on the bottom, right. If you decide to go with another type like donate or subscribe or others, the the button remains with this text on it. So if you if you select button type checkout, you won't get like the button will not automatically change for you to have the card network icon and the last four digits of the user's card as an FYI. Great. I have a um, personal wish. I don't know if it makes a lot of a ton of sense, but um, I don't know. It's it's something that came to mind. What do you think about adding four buttons below this one and using different styles so you can illustrate the customization capabilities? Yeah, I can do that. Um, I just saw one more question from Abu Safar. Yep, and that's a good question as well. Yeah, it's a very good question and for sure will be part of one of our other sessions, I guess, in, in more detail. Um, so once you receive your token, depending on what gateway you integrate with, you send it to your backend. Send it to your backend and um, call your, your gateway's server-to-server -server API accepting a token. Finally, the, the gateway will do the actual authorization and charging the card. Yeah. So when you run on production, you will receive a, let's say a blurb, a, an encrypted key, basically that only your PSP can decrypt uh, with the content of the payment method chosen and additional information should for them to create the, the order. Um, so our recommendation is to send that through your backends directly to your, to your PSP as, as Domi mentioned. By the way, now that we are talking about this, we will, in future episodes, we'll invite payment gateways to integrate with them. And awesome. so one thing that I'll ask you to do is if you have wishes for which payment gateway we should invite first, then we'll love to hear about that in the comments section. And then we'll try our best to, to have them join. Sounds great. And maybe we can take another question I just saw by accident, Jose. Um, the one by Elio Nunez. So this one, this one is a little bit a special question, but let me try to answer anyway. No, you can't, except if you're a bank. So banks, or if you're an issuer, you can apply for our issuing provisioning APIs and then develop your banking app um, to provision cards directly to, to Google Wallet. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for the question, Elio. Okay. Um, yeah, you want me to add multiple buttons, right? I don't know if it makes a lot of sense from the checkout perspective, but I, I thought it may look cool uh, to illustrate the different configuration options. Don't try this at home, by the way. Um, yeah. I think your users, your users will, will, will be happy if you have uh, five Google Pay buttons. But I'm not. I'm not going to wire them up, right? <laughs> yeah, you don't need to. Just to see how they look like. So you have. I see that you are in different multiple configuration options for 
the theme and the uh, corner radios. And now I guess I need to change the layout, right? Uh, it should be linear already, isn't it? Are you talking about linear layout? Yeah. Um, let's see why. So you have two buttons, right? And if you refresh, nothing shows up. So it could be could be a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I'd suggest that we refresh the whole app just to be sure. Although this shouldn't make a difference. Yeah. And if it's not that, it could be that we were right before that uh, the button is hidden by default. So we could try making it visible. All right. And maybe that's, that's a stretch, but uh, let's give it two minutes and see if that works. Mm-hmm. So then I need another member. Actually, hold on. So Naimish asks whether this is an interview, Domi. It's not an interview. Well, I'm not sure if they are referring to job interview or kind of a external guest interview, uh, but it's none of those. It's uh, only a live stream integration session with, with Google Pay. Yeah, I don't know why the activity checkout binding went red there. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. Then you need to add it. I think you need to associate associate it to the uh, from the binding at the top first in the onCreate method, where you have the Google Pay button in line sixty four. Yeah. Mm, that's a good point. Maybe you can add the visible property in the XML. We could have tried that. Um, that's a good point, uh, Harjinder. But still, it's kind of it's kind of. Um... No, I think. Um, but the reason is that we need to call initialize. So oh, it, true. Yeah. Like exactly. we are trying now something we, we talked about we should do for the first button, which is giving the mandatory allowed payment methods. So we, we would need to go through all of it again. True, true. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the use case was not so um, the button clean needs the payment methods. All. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Fair enough. Looks good. All right. A couple more questions. Uh, we are uh, insane gamer is asking about a country where Google Pay is not available. So the uh, online API is available, is enabled globally. That is, if you are operating from a country that has at least one payment gateway that supports Google Pay, then you can use the Google Pay online API. And uh, we have to make a distinction between that and paying in stores. Those are two different things. Uh, the former, again, it's available globally as long as there's a payment gateway available. That supports Google Pay and paying in stores. It's right now available, I'd say, in a bit more than 60 countries. You can quickly find um, a list of those countries in our support pages. But for what we are talking about today, which is the Olane API, that's, uh, it's opened uh, globally, if that helps. Thanks, Jose. And then we have a question from Dinesh that says, how to add remove cards to Google Wallet app from a bank app? I think that's what you already answered before, right? That is, you can only add cards. Let's say you can only add tokenization functionality to your application if you issue cards. You will have to have an exchange of keys with Google and uh, there's definitely a lot more than that. I'm just simplifying it in my mind. But basically, uh, you will get access to a, a, an API or a library that uh, lets you do that integration. The whole point here is that you as a card issuer 
can, let's say, create a token instead of Google Pay that identifies your card in Google Pay such that is it's uh, saved uh, with that kind of alternative number in the device. So that's not something that is open for every developer business, just businesses that issue cards. Correct. So you can see here from the link, you, you, you should be able to find it that you need to request access. And as Jose mentioned, and I, as I mentioned before, most likely you, you need to show that you're an issuing bank in order to get access to this API. Right. And it's not that you can set the visible property in the XML hardjinder. It's that for the button to show, you need to initialize it uh, programmatically, as you can see in line 40, what was it? A bit, yeah, 65. It needs to be initialized and it needs to take a list of allowed payment methods. That's why you couldn't see it before. Yeah, let me actually try one more, try another thing. So um, we are going to, we are going to remove this one and we are going to do add the property to our first button and still have this one. We still have this because as, as we mentioned, we, we need the, we need the payment methods. If, if you don't set this one, there will be at the moment there will be a an error message locked to lockcat in the future we might even enforce this from the button options builder so now maybe like this we can at least prove that this one works on the button what do you think jose what's that sorry maybe we can so i remove the second button and on yep. the fir on our very first button where everything worked before i added this one here Yep. And I for now remove this where yep. down here we actually set the property, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I can see this as something that leads into or goes in the direction of initializing the button only if Google Pay is available. That's something that we could go in the future about and, and make it a bit simpler. And, yeah. and then also deferring the uh, initialization if it's not available. Sounds good. Quick reminder, our next episode will be we'll be inviting a payment gateway to integrate Google Pay with them. So if you have any any wish, I would love to hear them in the comments section. Otherwise we'll pick um, we'll pick one from the list. Uh, Goosebump has a question for you, Jose. Yeah, so register for activity result for just for everyone if you're not familiar with the API. This is the new or the upgrade to the activity result API that has been there, I believe, since API 1 on Android, one of the most historic fundamental APIs on Android. It's received uh, an upgrade, which I personally, uh, personally like, because I think it reduces a, a room for errors and poten potential leaks. Take a look if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, currently, the Google Pay API doesn't support the Google Pay API uses activity results and currently doesn't support the new activity result API, but we are working on that. We're working to add support to this API because um, two reasons. A, the uh, original API is deprecated, so it will be retired at some point. That's uh, something that the Android team, it's it's in their hands. But second, we think it's, a, it's, a, it's an API that makes your life easier. And so we definitely want to add support for it. We will keep you posted uh, if you check out our channels in Twitter at Google Pay Devs and the Google Developers blog. We will definitely publish there when we have something for you. Thank you for the question, Goosebumps. Great. So how are, how are we doing with our integration? Are we happy with it? Are we good to go live, Tommy, and publish our t-shirt shop? I think so, yeah. Um, okay. The dynamic button works, as we mentioned at the beginning, uh, soonish with when, when we go out from beta. Um, we will even display the card network icon and the last four digits of the user's last use card on the button directly. And the integration works. We receive a token. And now, theoretically, we will be ready to take the token and send it over to a gateway. Great. 
and that's what we will do in future episodes. So I think that uh, puts it in a puts us in a in a good place to finalize this. I'll give you one last chance for additional questions. Why we take on ninjas question, and uh, that is uh, how to learn compose UI. There's a ton of resources. The Android team is heavily invested, and and there's there's a lot of good quality resources. No matter where you look, if you look right, and you look for open source apps or documentation or demos, or if you look left and you prefer videos or talks or sessions, there's definitely a lot. A lot. And again, new and good quality material. Uh, and so take a look. Uh, concretely, I recommend you to go to the Google I.O. playlist that has the freshest content. It was uh, released publicly last week. So take a look at the playlist and there's some uh, good gems on specifically Jetpack Compose. So take a look. Cool. Great. And I don't see any more questions coming. We have one suggestion for a PSP. So we'll take that into consideration. Thank you, Arjinder. And I think that uh, with that, we can wrap it up for this very smooth first Google Pay integration. I don't know if uh, all the others will go like that. Uh, Probably I'm not. not. Sure if, Probably not, not sure if I like it. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I may prefer to have a, a more... A, Bumpier one, so that we can, you know, get in the mud and explore different uh, resources. You know, I think I think a lot of a lot of things are complicated if it comes to payments. Then maybe it, it's pretty good if the cheap pay integration at least is pretty simple, right? I agree. Yeah, <laughs> should be simple. Payments are an important part of businesses, so uh, it's it's. Uh, I think it's more convenient if they work nicely, easily. Uh, Nikhil Gupta, uh, stable ver version of the. Relay, I guess you're referring to Google Pay and Compose, but if you're not, let us know. Uh, we do have a stable version of the Google Pay button in Jetpack Compose already, and we are going to uh, release an article on Google Developers about that soon. So um, take a look in there or, or stay tuned because something is going to come out. But the library is public already. All right, so I think that's a great way to end. Thank you for the comments, for the questions and your help. I think this was uh, great. Actually, we got help, uh, even though we didn't get uh, into, we say in Spain, too many gardens. I don't think that makes sense in English. It probably doesn't, but it basically means that we didn't get into trouble. I'd say thank you to all of you who joined us uh, remotely. And uh, Domi, thanks so much for guiding us through a modern Google Pay integration. Thank you so much, Jose. It was a pleasure. Let us know if there are integration paths or topics that you really think we should cover in future episodes. We'll invite, as we said, uh, payment gateways to complete the Google Pay integration with us in upcoming episodes. So uh, we are going to take your, your preferences, uh, don't worry. Uh, I think that uh, this uh, makes our first episode come to an end. So this was live Google Pay integrations on Android with Google Pay DevRel. Have a great day until next time. Bye-bye.